Okay, everyone, welcome back. I know it's been a while since the last scale hive update, so I apologize for that. It's just the time of year, it's been really busy lately. I'm trying to do a lot of things at once. So our yellow hive today weighs 169 pounds. And our green hive today, our green hive weighs 163 pounds right now. So uh, I'm not even sure the last day that I was through these colonies. It probably would have been 10 days or maybe a little bit more by now. Um, the main thing that I want to look at today is the honey supers. It's June 26th today, so we're just into um, what should be the peak honey flow of my season. As well as I know this area, right now for the next um, two weeks is probably the most honey that comes in throughout the season. So. I need to check these honey supers and my decision today is basically do I add one honey super right now or do I just go ahead and add two today? Uh, which might be the case if the three that are on these uh, are relatively full. So let's get into it. Okay, so our yellow hive here, it has been the strongest of the two throughout the season. And uh, if you remember at the beginning, it actually weighed less than the green hive and it passed it at some point uh, now it weighs quite a bit more so the population of bees in this colony is is really large it's all throughout these supers and that is exactly what we want for peak honey production time so this top super was the first one and then I put new ones on the bottom so I just want to show you this one's full Okay, so at least half, probably closer to two thirds capped honey. The middle frames are all capped and even right to the outside here. These are heavy, heavy with honey right to the outside. And that one is not capped, but it's full of honey and will be capped shortly here. So for all intents and purposes, this top super is full and finished. Not ready to harvest today, but it's full. Okay, then our second super, again, full population of bees. Um, let me just crack these apart. Our second super looks like that side's not capped at all. That side is. Um, so these are all sort of like the outside frames in that top super where they're nearly full of honey. Whoops. <laughs> they're nearly full of honey, but not completely capped. But there's a lot of weight in this and there's really very little room left to store new honey to store new nectar coming in and turn it into honey so this box is relatively full sort of 80 percent full set that there for now then this was our newest box added um, less less than two weeks ago i think we added this box so let's just have a look here They've bridged a couple of these together. Well, that's not good. They started to make some of their own comb. There was a bit too much space. That was mostly foundation. That side they're filling with honey. But most of these frames are sort of half full, I would guess, with honey. Maybe a little less than half. They're putting uh, actually more pollen than I'd like to see right there. Yeah, maybe about half to a little less than half full of honey. So the question is, do I add one box or two right now? So really with this big, big population of bees, um, 
good nectar flow coming on. I know the plants in the area and I know what's blooming and I know they're big, big nectar producers. Um, so really at this point, I think I'm gonna add two, two medium honey supers to this colony. If I was using deeps for these colonies, I would probably just go ahead and add one more deep right now. But because I'm using mediums for these colonies in particular, I'm gonna add two mediums today to this. And then they probably won't need another super um, for at least two weeks. So like always, I'm just gonna have a quick look in the brood chamber, see what's going on down here. Okay, things look pretty good down here in the brood chamber. Um, I have seen a couple beginnings of maybe some swarm cells. Hopefully that's the last time in the season that they're really gonna start thinking about that. Not on this frame, but I did see a couple on another frame. So I'm just gonna take a minute here, um, maybe spot our queen. I can see she's laying eggs and tear down some of these swarm cells, but I won't bore you with all those details because I've done it a couple times before. This will be the third time this season of going through that routine. Okay, here's our queen. She's marked yellow, so it's the same queen that's been in this colony all year. Um, they haven't swarmed because we've prevented them from that, and there's no signs of super siege or anything like that. So as I look through this brood chamber, um, and I think I noticed the same thing in, in, another col in the other colony the last time, but both of these hives on the very outside frame, if I can bring that up close, have a really nice frame, relatively full with pollen. Um, and I think that's a really good thing to see in these single brood chambers. Um, so it just shows that they're using their space pretty efficiently. There's also practically no honey stored down in this brood chamber or even nectar. Um, some of these cells have a bit of nectar in them that I can tell when I shake the bees off of them. But for the most part, there's really no honey or nectar being stored down in the brood chamber, which is also a really good thing to see so that the queen can use all this space for egg laying. Okay, then just quickly, I wanted to show you the last few frames. Um, there was pollen on that outside frame. The other side of that frame that faces the outside wall is actually, um, it's not in the best shape and the bees aren't really using it that much. It really should be replaced. Um, but then there was brood right across. Um, this frame was here, which is a full frame of brood. Then this frame was our second to outside one. And this one is uh, about three quarters brood. And then she's got a, about a quarter of this side is pollen. Uh, that side's entirely brood. Young stuff in the middle with capped. Um, and actually she's laid up in that corner as well. So this is a full frame of brood with a bit of pollen. There was actually one frame I noticed in the middle that was sort of half pollen. It was sort of brood on the, the front half and pollen back to there. Uh, but that frame was right there. And then our very outside frame in this brood chamber um, was brood on the inside with actually quite a bit of pollen right here. And then the back side that faces the wall of the hive um, is actually mostly pollen or it's a good mix of pollen and nectar that they're putting in there. Probably the ne nectar temporarily and then they'll move it up into the supers. So that was on the outside of the wall. So overall I'm really, I just wanted to show you that because um, I think this is a really good example of the bees using a single brood chamber space as efficiently as possible. This queen is clearly like really productive. Um, there is still empty space in there as brood hatches out. I am seeing empty space that she hasn't laid in yet. So I'm confident that she still has enough room to lay as much as she would like to. Um, but they're not storing any honey down in the brood chamber. It's quickly being moved up to the honey supers and I think that's a really efficient use of space. So overall, I, I really like everything about this colony, um, except for the fact that on three occasions this year, I've seen them making some swarm cells. Uh, and that's definitely not the case with all my colonies. 
Uh, so that's not a great thing to see, but that's the way they are. Okay, I grabbed a couple supers to put on. Now, I have lots of, lots of supers with drawn comb that's been extracted in past years. It's only ever used for honey. Um, so I extract it and I store it away and I use it again. Now I know a lot of people don't have, a lot of new beekeepers obviously, don't have the luxury of drawn comb. And if I didn't have so much drawn comb ready to go, now would be the time um, where I wouldn't hesitate to use foundation. The bees are already used to coming up into that super. Um, the honey flow is so strong that they move honey up through the excluder very quickly. So if you have some drawn comb, I would use that um, early in the season to encourage your bees to come up and, and store honey up here. Um, and now this time during that real peak strong honey flow is a fine time to add foundation and they'll draw that out really quickly. Okay, so that's two new mediums. And I put my three three mediums back on that are full of bees. Okay, so five mediums on this hive now, uh, with two of them brand new. This is really about as much as I would like to stack up hives if I have the choice. Obviously most of my hives don't quite sit this high up off the ground in the first place, but lifting them much higher than this becomes a pain. So this top box, like I said, it's not ready to harvest yet. There's still some open nectar that needs to be ripened down a bit further before the bees cap it off. But realistically within a week or so, um, this entire box could be taken away. This second box could likely be taken away relatively soon as well. And then you leave the bees to work on the newer supers. Um, and then if you, if you could extract those honey supers right away, then Later, when the bees are ready for more, you can reuse those honey supers a couple times in the same season, which obviously saves you equipment. So really, if I was managing my bees all this way for honey production and using mostly medium supers, I'd like to have at least five mediums per colony. And some beekeepers would say you might want more than that. Okay, it's almost as tall as me now. 